In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves now to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you, and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, we find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O Lord, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you loved them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. The apostles, the Virgin Mary, and some other men and women were gathered in the upper room, praying, make decisions, making decisions by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, caring for one another, and praying some more. As we mentioned yesterday, they were simply being the church there in the upper room. During those 10 days between Ascension and Pentecost, they were simply enjoying each other's company as the church. And most importantly, they were simply being with God, being one with God. And that sounds lovely, and I'm sure that it was. But at the same time, you know, it's difficult to wrap our minds around what being one with God is like. What is that like? If you try to describe it in words, you find that uh, words are inadequate. Even when Jesus is praying here in the Gospel to the Father about the oneness between the two of them, and when he's expressing his desire that his disciples be one with the Father and the Son, as the Father and the Son are one, you and me, I and you, they and me, us and them. It can leave us confused, maybe, is the word. Words can fail to really express what being one with God is like. But you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Being one with God isn't necessarily something to be understood in the mind. Instead, it's something to be lived, to be experienced. Union is not just a concept. In its most basic and primary sense, union is a living reality. St. Thomas Aquinas spent his whole life writing about God and faith and humanity and so, so on. He spent his whole life writing. But then late in life, he said, It's all chaff. It's all chaff. It's all like the husk on a wheat grain, which serves a purpose, but which ultimately falls away to reveal the grain inside. All of Aquinas' writings, in his own words, was chaff. His intellectual understanding of unity with God gave way, finally, to actual living unity with God. And you know something, he didn't write anymore after that. How could he? Words fail to really get at what it's like to be one with God. And so as we continue on here in these days between Ascension and Pentecost, we can ask God to help us to be one with him. Maybe God will lead us to a good spiritual book that will help us. Maybe God will inspire us to listen to some uh, uplifting music. Maybe God will simply put warmth and peace in our hearts and minds where it needs to be. Who knows? We pray to God 
that he will help us to be one with him. God, Holy Trinity, help your children to be one with you and to enjoy the company of the apostles, the Virgin Mary, and the numerous other men, women, and children who all sit at your feet, adoring you and being adored by you. And once again, we offer our prayers, our needs, and the needs of the world to the Lord. We pray for the church and all her leaders, that her joy, peace, and strength will be found in her relationship and unity with God. Let us pray to the Lord. For our society in the United States, that she will be blessed with strength, neighborliness, faith, wisdom, and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from fear, worry, anxiety, or, or despair, that faith and hope might increase for them and bring them peace, let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, for all parishes in our diocese, for the homebound and those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, let us pray to the Lord. For the living and deceased members of the David Pushnak family for whom this Mass is offered, and for all the faithful departed, that they might be one with God, the Holy Trinity, alongside the angels and the saints, let us pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, once again we come before you with these prayers, spoken all the prayers that we hold in our hearts from wherever we worship today. We ask you in your kindness to receive these prayers, to answer them according to your goodwill, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spreads throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also how our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Now behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Mm -hmm.